Hello, welcome to the third edition of the Atlas MS. My name is Rachel King and I'm International Evidence Manager at MS International Federation. I'm responsible for the Atlas of MS project and I'm really pleased today to be sharing some of the key findings from the epidemiology data. The Atlas of MS was first published in 2008 in partnership with the World Health Organization and updated in 2013. Today I report on our third edition. We know that the early editions have been used in a variety of ways to evidence research initiatives as well as for campaigning and advocacy. This time, we aim to update our statistics, improve our confidence in the data by including new countries and representing a high proportion of the global population, improving the way we calculate the global prevalence number, and providing a wider range of reporting tools to make the data more accessible for different types of audiences. The Atlas of MS is unique in that it reaches beyond just the published literature. We seek out experts in every country to gather the most up-to-date data available. We started by identifying and recruiting experts to act as country coordinators. These were usually contacting MS organisations, neurologists, epidemiologists, researchers and academics. We encouraged them to collaborate in gathering and reporting the data, and in fact many countries did this. The country coordinators provided the data via a survey and they were asked to provide evidence of their sources of information where possible. We had 115 countries who responded out of the 138 we enrolled. This gives us an 83% response rate. We took a lot of time to review and clean the data working closely with the country coordinators to understand and justify any data conflicts. We also reviewed the data sources and allocated a confidence score of high, moderate, low or very low. And this was used to indicate how reliable the source was. A number of factors fed into this scoring system, including the year of the data collection, whether the, the, data, the source information had any validation or peer review methods, um, and whether it was based on the whole country or maybe perhaps just a region or a province. We hope this confidence score will improve the ability to interpret and compare the data and also support the need for enhanced surveillance of MS generally um, across the world. So as I mentioned, we had 115 countries responding to the epidemiology survey and these countries represented 87% of the world's population. The orange bars on this chart show the proportion of the population represented by the countries responding in each of the World Bank income groupings. And I'm really pleased to report that we had high coverage in all income bands, just with the exception of the low income category, which I've circled here, where we only had 37% of the population covered. The green bars show the same data, but this time split by the WHO regions and the proportion of the population represented again is high for all regions except Africa, again, which I've circled. And just for reference, I'm just popping up a map that shows the countries who responded shown in orange and our gaps in grey. So this chart shows a number of countries who provided data for each of the key statistics in 2013 and they're shown in light orange and for our third edition in 2020 in the darker orange. For most statistics, more countries have been able to report in 2020. The only exception is the age of diagnosis, which has gone down, most likely due to the fact that we had newer countries this time around reporting for the first time. The biggest uplifts are for paediatric prevalence, incidence, and type of MS at diagnosis. Despite these positive trends, though, we can still see there's substantial gaps in our knowledge, um, and we invite everyone involved in the MS movement to help contribute and update the Atlas um, with their country data to help give us a clearer global picture. If we look specifically at the prevalence data towards the top of this chart, um, we can see that this was provided by experts in 104 countries in 2020, and this represents 83% of the global population. 
Again, this is an improvement since 2013, where 93 countries were provided data, and that represented 79% of the world's population. Not only do we cover a greater proportion of the population for the prevalence data, the quality of the source information has also improved, increasing our confidence. 57% of the country experts cited a peer-reviewed academic study, which was an uplift from 51% in 2013. A further 27% source data from registers or electronic medical records. And if we add both these types of sources together, this means that 84% provided evidence for their prevalence statistics in 2020, compared to just 71% in 2013. So looking at the prevalence statistics for the third edition in more detail, it is really clear that prevalence varies greatly between countries and different world regions. It ranges from less than one person per 100,000 in some countries, up to 337 people per 100,000 in others. Higher prevalence countries are typically found further away from the equator and also tend to be high income countries. Looking at the chart, prevalence levels are highest in the European and America regions. So when we look at the countries who didn't respond or were unable to provide prevalence data, these tended to be mostly countries in the African or Western Pacific regions, which have the lowest prevalence rates. We need to bear this in mind when we're trying to estimate um, the total number of people living with MS worldwide, because if we were used to use, say, for example, the global average rate to infill, um, we'd be likely to overestimating that number. For the Atlas Third Edition, we worked with our epidemiology expert advisors to develop a new, more accurate methodology for calculating the global number of people with MS. So this method works by first combining the prevalence data that was reported for the 104 countries. And this gives us a figure of 2.6 million. But obviously we're conscious we're missing the 17% of the population. So we first search for data for those missing countries via a view of the published literature and referencing back to the 2013 Atlas. We found data for an extra 19 countries this way. So we took the data from these 123 countries and used it to calculate the pooled prevalence for 15 subregions of the world based on the Global Health Data Exchange subregions. The subregion prevalences were then applied to countries with missing data using the 2019 populations. And if we add all of these together, this gives us a global population total of 2.8 million people with MS. Um, and this is definitely our most accurate estimate to date. So how does the global estimate um, compare to 2013? Um, our improved methodology does make it a bit difficult to compare directly to the global estimate of 2013. Um, in the last two versions, in fact, of the Atlas, the global median prevalence rate was used to fill in the gaps for the missing countries. If we replicated that method, so use the median um, prevalence with the 2020 data, we would get an estimate of 3 million people worldwide, which represents an increase of 30% in seven years. But we're reporting on 2.8 million um, people with MS because we're confident this is a much more accurate estimate this time around. And of course, using either methodology, we're still seeing an increase in the number of people with MS worldwide. To understand this increasing prevalence, we ran a sub-analysis based on just 81 countries who had provided prevalence data across both time points. So that's in 2020 and 2013. And we calculated the pool rev prevalence for the global figures, as well as for the, the six WHO regions. 
If we look at the global figures, which are shaded in green, we can see an increase of 50% globally. But it's worth noting that obviously by restricting to 81 countries, um, we are, are skewing towards higher income countries as they're most likely to be able to be in a position to report in both time points, um, mainly because they have more consistent data collection. Notwithstanding this, though, we do see increases in prevalence across all six WHO regions. This is in line with several national studies that have been published since the, the last edition, um, including a study in the US, which reported a doubling of prevalence, um, as well as studies in the Middle East, North Africa and Europe. The increase in prevalence of MS is likely to be due to a number of factors. So improved and earlier diagnosis, better reporting, people with MS living longer, and global population growth. So lots of different things kind of contributing to, to that increase. Although the number of people with MS has increased, the profile remains the same with the global average age of diagnosis being 32 years and females still being at least twice as likely to have MS as males. In some countries, however, this view towards females is increasing um, and there's as many as four, four females with MS to every male. In this latest edition, we see increasing recognition and surveillance of paediatric MS too, with 30,000 cases of MS in people aged under 18, compared to 7,000 reported seven years ago in 2013. This is really likely to be a reflection of a number of childhood prevalence studies completed since the last edition of the Atlas. And so although that's improving, there's still big gaps in our understanding as only 47 countries were able to report on MS um, amongst children and young people. So still some way to go. So thank you for watching. Um, I invite you to review the Atlas data further by visiting the Atlas of MS website where you can find the full report and lots of other materials. You can also sign up for our next data release there, which will centre around the clinical management of MS and specifically around barriers to diagnosis and treatment. And also please see our poster presentations at the conference, which are, are shown here. Um, and if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to send us a message either via the chat function or you can email me at atlas at msif.org. Thanks again.